of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and experts say now is the time to talk about this silent epidemic. Tonight, Fox 26's Hillary Whittier reports on how to escape an abusive relationship and how to protect yourself. She's live in the newsroom tonight. Hillary. Well, that's right. One of the hardest things to talk about regarding this epidemic is the isolation factor and how abuse can often go undetected. But experts say it's time to talk about it more, discuss the red flags, and learn how to protect yourself if you're ever attacked. Yeah, you gotta give me some reason to stop or I'm gonna keep coming, right? I'm a train. Boom, that slows me down. Eric Loveless is a master karate instructor for Pearland Family Martial Arts. And then I want you to start punching, boom, boom. Cause that's what they're gonna do in a real fight, okay? An eighth degree black belt himself. Eric knows the impact of being able to defend yourself in any situation. Especially ladies, you know, they're gonna be more afraid of, uh, you know, being in danger more often than men. He adds a lot of that fear can come from inside the home in the form of domestic violence. He's worked with many clients who have come seeking courage and training that could save their lives. You know, you're gonna have to teach them a little different, especially if they've already been abused before. Now in a real fight, you wanna concentrate just on those, on those legs. Some of those teachings he shows us yeah. as he and his students demonstrate some of the most common moves abusers use. In a self-defense situation, you know, a, a few things happen. They grab you by your hair, so you have to learn how to get out of that. They're going to grab you by the wrist, and they're going to take you away, so we got to get out of that. Or they're going to choke you. Argue with me, or he would hit me, or whatever. Jolanda Jones, remember her? The former track star and survivor of domestic violence tells us those moves are similar to what her abusive husband used on her. He starts strangling me. It's the first time he ever strangled me. That's when I realized when you're getting strangled, you cannot breathe and you cannot scream. The control of holding someone's life in their hands is what experts say often leads to more and more abuse in an already tumultuous relationship. The victim typically doesn't want to leave their partner. They just want the abuse to stop. Chastity Patterson is the Battering Intervention and Prevention Program Director at the Aid to Victims of Domestic Abuse. This society has a tendency to blame the victim for staying in the relationship. And again, we haven't walked in their shoes, so we can't come to know what they're experiencing day to day. And according to this chart the AVDA provided us, Harris County sees more domestic violence fatalities than any other county in Texas. Another chilling stat, experts say it takes, on average, seven times for the victim to finally leave his or her abuser. You could just see that I was not happy. I was sad. I was always hopeful. Hopeful. That's the feeling Jolanda tells us she always carried with her while struggling in her marriage. He had started to isolate me from people. I mean, I, I recognize that now. I didn't really recognize it then. From July 12th until November. After six years of mental and eventually physical battering, Jolanda is now an advocate in the Houston community, working to help others who find themselves stuck. Every relationship is different. Every abusive relationship is different. It's those differences Renee Gillespie of the Houston Area Women's Center says makes it difficult for victims to find their way out. But there are red flags that you can look for. According to helpguide.org, here are the most obvious warning signs being afraid or anxious to please their partner, worrying about their partner's temper, jealousy or possessiveness, and receiving frequent harassing phone calls. The biggest warning both Renee and Jolanda discuss, isolation. And they might do that in a number of different ways, right? They could humiliate you in front of your friends or family, act extremely jealous when you hang out with your friends or family, try to get you to stop doing the general hobbies or your outside interests, right? So then they're isolating you. These behaviors are what Jolanda says broke down her spirit and her confidence. But once she decided to find help, things slowly got better. Now that I'm out of the relationship, I just don't think anyone can be the best them that they can be until they're entirely okay with themselves and they accept their flaws and don't look down at themselves. So I think that as long as you're in a relationship where someone who loves you is constantly chipping away at your self-esteem, you will not ever be as productive as you can be. And we have focused on these stories the past couple of days because domestic violence is so prevalent. If you or someone you know is struggling in an abusive relationship, you can head to our website for a list of phone numbers to help, or you can call the domestic abuse hotline at 1-800-799-7000.
7233. Live in the newsroom, Hillary Whittier, Fox 26 News.